a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before, a giant cooking arena, a kitchen stadium. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. On a cuisine! To realize his dream, he first secretly started selecting the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Masaharu Morimoto. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. The Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from around the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day, using all their senses, skills, creativity, they're to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. But this man has even bigger dreams. Yes, he is on a quest to see and experience more from around the world. In Paris. in Beijing. In Hong Kong and other exotic locales. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where you will meet the master chefs from around the world and their artistic creations. What inspiration will today's challenger bring and how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on. If my memory serves me right, this must be the day that a new Japanese Iron Chef will make his glorious debut. It's my vision that the Japanese Iron Chef will create a Japanese cuisine that will be appreciated universally, satisfying people worldwide. Thus, despite opposition and criticism, I have set my eyes on a man based in New York City at the highly acclaimed Japanese restaurant co-owned by Hollywood film star Robert De Niro, Nobu. The prestige and reputation that the establishment has received is virtually unchallenged. The Zygat survey shows that Nobu has ranked the number one Japanese restaurant since its opening in 1994. And this is the man at the helm, the captain of the great ship, our new Iron Chef Japanese, Masaharu Morimoto. He made his start as a sushi chef in the US in 1985. Armed with unique ideas and refined skills, combining the excitement of New York dining styles with the traditions of Japanese cuisine. His creations have attracted a wide range of discerning and sophisticated admirers. And going against him, a heavyweight from the same arena of Japanese cuisine. The best of Yokohama. The highly acclaimed Hanyate. It is said to entertain guests in style in Yokohama, you must visit the famous Chinatown or experience the world of Hanyate. And this is the man responsible for protecting the honor behind the name. Introducing from Yokohama, Master Chef Yukio Hirayama. He started at Hanyate at age 28. He brings years of loyalty and tireless devotion to high standards and tradition, as well as a passion for originality. I believe a chef has to rely on his own senses to create flavor. It is not a science, it's an art. I rely on my taste buds only after all these years of training. He has achieved the title of Master Chef and has developed his own distinct style based on recipes handed down through generations. The guardian of an art in its purest form, keeping the intricate balance of the essential elements in Japanese cuisine, flavor and beauty. Now, it is only a matter of time. 
we await with great anticipation for the arrival of the new Iron Chef from New York. And Chef Hidayama, show us the true meaning of experience. May you be triumphant. I'm just going to give it my best, using all of my years of experience. Welcome to the Kitchen Stadium. Today, we will embrace a new Iron Chef Japanese, bringing new trends into the world of Japanese gourmet cooking. For his debut, we welcome a challenger of equal caliber from one of the top restaurants in Yokohama. We welcome to the Kitchen Stadium from Hanyate in Yokohama, Yukio Hirayama. The top man in Japanese cuisine in Yokohama enters the stadium. He walks the royal road of traditional Japanese cuisine and is many celebrities' favorite chef. Will his skills stack up against the Iron Chef, though? Thank you for joining us. And now, with our new chef among them, once again, I summon the Iron Chefs! In the solemn atmosphere of the kitchen stadium, finally, we will see the costume of the new Iron Chef. The color is silver. And in silver attire, the new Iron Chef Japanese rises with the other Iron Chefs. The start of a new era in the culinary arts. Iron Chinese Chen Kenichi, Iron French Hiroyuki Sakai, and Iron Chef Japanese III Masaharu Morimoto. These three men will spearhead new trends in culinary fields in Japan. I must mention that this will be anything but easy, no matter who you choose. So if you're ready, who will it be? The new Iron Chef, Morimoto-san. And so it is, the beginning of a new age. The man picked by the challengers, the top Japanese chef from New York, a new leader in Japanese cuisine. From Nobu, the famous Japanese restaurant in New York, Masaharu Morimoto. His skills, recognized worldwide, shine brighter than the diamond he wears in his ear. His creations go beyond ordinary Japanese cuisine, adding elements of French, Chinese, Italian, and others. Now he has a chance to enhance his growing legend. The appointment of a new chef is a high risk for us, as we are uncertain of his full capabilities. And to make things interesting, and as a celebration, I've chosen a festive delicacy that will test the skills needed to prepare sophisticated Japanese cuisine. We unveil the ingredient. Our theme is Red Snapper. It's the new Iron Chef's debut, the Battle of Red Snapper. The world-class Japanese chef, who's based in New York, will be under the microscope. Going against a high-caliber chef from Yokohama, can he come away with a win in his first match? The opening gong is near. On it! Cheese in! Now the battle begins in what shapes up to be a tough debut match for the third Japanese Iron Chef, with a new angle in effect. Japanese food imported from New York. Iron Chef Morimoto already grim-faced out of the gate, going against Hirayama from Yokohama. Yes, they both look very tense, these chefs. Right, they're probably not even hearing what we're saying up here, and maybe that's a good thing for them. <laughs> 
Tom. Yes. Reporting from the floor, before the start, I asked Chef Morimoto how he feels about being in the stadium for the very first time, and he said he's enjoying it, but to be honest, it's a little intimidating. Yes, he does look tense. First time around, Kitchen Stadium can give you the shakes. Wait a second here on the challenger side. What's he up to? What's he riding here? This says Tai, red snapper in Chinese characters. Okay, is this a decoration of some sort? Perhaps he's going to use it later, perhaps to cover something. Or it could be a lucky charm. <laughs> you mean superstition. <laughs> okay, today's guests, Kaori Mamoy, actress. Two chefs are tense, but you look relaxed. Do I? <laughs> well... You like red snapper? Yes, it's my favorite. I always enjoy one half as sashimi, raw, and the other half grilled. And you can have other pieces as well, with the snapper that big. So sashimi is a must. Yes, I always want one sashimi dish. Okay, and how about you, Mr. Okada? How do you like your red snapper? Well, I like to use the whole fish with the head and the whole body together for the presentation. And I'm very interested to see how they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about a person who caters to New York gourmets, yeah. so I don't think he prepares it raw that often. Okay, I hear what you're saying. We'll keep an eye on that. Fukui san? Yes. I asked the new Iron Chef what it meant to him preparing Japanese food in New York, and he said, I never thought about it too much. Dining is entertainment, and if you're too concerned about style, you're you're not going to make it in New York. He should know. Look at the challenger. He has removed only the bones from the fish. Yes, and he's just opened up the back. Does that mean he's going to stuff it? I think so. All right, again, today's battle is between a guardian of traditional Japanese cuisine and a Japanese chef from New York who offers a world version of Japanese food. The theme, Red Snapper, the king of fish. He is now, oh, he's now using a torch on the cutoff parts. He's probably going to put them in the oven. Well, to perhaps make broth out of them? Broth? Yes, I think so. He's trying to get rid of the fishy smell. So he just laid them on the grill just to use the torch like that? But not to fire up the grill itself. This looks almost like a sports competition. That's the idea. Already it's unpredictable. We were told he was different. For sure, he's got imagination. Yes. New Iron Chef Morty He's really Martino. dynamic. And over in the Royal Box, we have all the Iron Chefs assembled here. We'll ask the first and second Japanese Iron Chefs what they think about what they're seeing from their successor. First, Michiba-san. Yes. What do you think? What's your reaction watching the new Iron Chef to this point? Well, he's real good. Whoa, well, well, what kind of dishes should we expect from him? First of all, he's using the innards and braising the bones for the broth. That leads me to believe that we will see some global versions of Japanese food. Ah, uh, hmm, okay, thanks. And here we see something that Michiba used quite often, a pressure cooker. Fukui-san? Yes. Besides the snapper, the pressure cooker also contains onions, celery, and leeks, which were all braised without torch. Got it. So he's already put the braised items in the pressure cooker. Okay, we'll go back to the royal box now. Nakamoto-san, Japanese Iron Chef 2, would you care to share with us your view of your successor? Well, he's fast. He works incredibly fast. But he'll probably take some time when it comes to the critical part to create something really fantastic. Okay, we'll wait. Thanks. Fukui-san? Yes? I'm watching the Iron Chef right now, and he's been looking for something called Tai no Tai. What was that? They're the bones near the pectoral fins. It's uh, it's over to the right. Yes, this one, this one. Uh, see, they look like the snapper in shape. Snapper inside a snapper. What are these for? Decoration. Fifteen minutes have elapsed. Ah, oh, look, the challenger has started using a torch as well. Yes, Hirayama's gone to the torch and is throwing flames onto the head. For broth, I wonder, isn't that sort of a, a waste of the head? <laughs> Fukuizan, yes. this bowl on the Iron Chef's side contains two types of miso and hot jalapeno. Jalapeno. Ooh, my, this looks very jalapeno, good. Jalapeno, I see. And now the innards are being prepared. Jalapeno. Ooh, my, this looks very jalapeno, good. Jalapeno, I see. And now the innards are being prepared. Well, this is for some raw item, or apply it on the fish meat before grilling. Yes, braising it. That's good. I see. Fukuizan. Yes. The challenger's pot contains fish broth, sake, sweet cooking sake, and the heads he was braising with the torch. Okay. Now he says the reason he's using the torch is to create a savory aroma. Ah, so that's it. Oh, look, the Iron Chef is pouring bourbon over it. He sure is from the U.S. And he's soaking the pectoral bones into the bourbon, probably for a nice smell. 
Hold it. They can't be eaten. They're too hard. Well, yeah, it, I think it's for decoration. Well, then it sure is a fancy decoration. Oh, on the Maybe challenger the side, this is turnip stew. stew. Yes, it is. It's a traditional <laughs> dish. Fukuisan. Yes. I asked the challenger why he's making an everyday dish here of all places. And he said, well, this speaks for my 30 years of training as a chef. It's a matter of pride. And it may not look like anything special, but the taste is top notch guaranteed. Back to you. Oh, look at the Iron Chef. Miso? Yes, he uh, has mixed it with miso. And caviar. Fukui-san, this is caviar and saikyo miso, you're right. Amazing, a blend of caviar and miso. Wonder how it will taste with the subtle flavor of the snapper. Ooh, pretty. Look on the challenger side, there's a pinkish rice. This is sticky rice. How did he get this color? Fukui-san, with red food coloring. Simple enough. The rice was steamed in a steamer with sake, salt, and I water. I think he's going to stuff this into the snapper. Into the whole fish? And then steam the whole thing again. Yes, you are right. He's got abalone, prawns. Uh, this looks really good. No argument here. Over on the Iron Chef side, look at that. Potato chips, uh -huh. he's pasting the caviar and miso onto the potato chips. I imagine these would be garnishes to a main course. If, if he wasn't using miso, this would be Western, but he has added miso. That makes it Japanese. He hasn't forgotten the soul of Japanese food. You can take the man out of Japan, but oh no. Oh my gosh, he's drinking cola. Oh my, if it were Michiba-san, you know it'd be sake. He sure is a New Yorker. So unique. I didn't know we had any cola in the kitchen stadium. Oh, you are right. Look, he's putting the rice into the fish. Yes, and this is over on the challenger side. Is he going side. to steam it? Yes, Chiso I, leaves I too. think so. What, what do you think? It's the only way he could do it, right? And yes, that is it. He is going to employ the steamer. Now, check it out. The Iron Chef has placed snapper slices on top of his chips creation. The Iron Chef seems to be loosening up a bit now. Yes, he's in his element. Fukui-san? Yes. You're absolutely right. As you can see in this container, he has the potato chips on top of which he's pasted the caviar and miso mix, and now he's adding those snapper slices. Okay, Ota, we've got that, and it's a one-of-a-kind dish there for sure. 30 minutes have elapsed. 30 minutes gone, 30 minutes oh, left. Oh, hi, this is ice cream. Ice cream? Then we should call it Thai cream. <laughs> Did you see him adding some snapper to it? Not that I know of. Then likely he'll add this to something. Meantime, what he torched and put in the pressure cooker is um, mm -hmm. being... What is, what's happening I over here? I think it's a soup. He's making soup of poisson, soup of fish, I think. Using red snapper for soup, mm -hmm. isn't that a bit of a waste of the fish? Oh, this, this ought to be good. Fukuizan! Yes? Here's what the Iron Chef is doing now. He has cured the snapper slices with seaweed and has wrapped them around a mixture of ground garlic, scallions, thinly sliced ginger, sweet shrimp, and sea urchin. Back to you. Wow, I don't think anybody will object to the taste mm -hmm. of that. Mm, sounds great. It's got to be good. Oh, and on the challenger side, he's got bamboo shoots and... Uh, miso. Fukui-san? Yes. The challenger has blended two types of miso together with a hot, spicy bean sauce mixed in. All right. And we see that he is spreading it onto the bamboo shoots, but as of yet, we don't see any snapper being put on. I wonder if that's for sashimi. He'll be putting snapper on it. Fukui-san, an ahead. update on what's happening over on the Iron Chef site. He took the contents out of the pressure cooker and has strained that through a strainer, and that's what you see here in this bowl. He strained all the contents in the pressure cooker? I believe so. With the bones, too? As far as I can tell. All right, well, usually the bones are discarded. Oh, he's, he's not wasting anything. And that paste is loaded with calcium. <laughs> okay, this is Hirayama's side, and why is he making these slits? To put something in them? I have no idea yet, sorry. It's delicate blade work from the challenger. And yes, he is going to sandwich the bamboo oh, yes, slices. Is. I was wrong, sorry. <laughs> Mm, but is he going to steam this too? No, maybe not this time. My guess is he's going to grill this. Grill it? Yeah, that sounds good. So it's bamboo shoots with miso sandwiched by snapper. Yes, the bamboo shoots give you a sense of spring and a nice texture when you bite into it. Okay, Otasan, I see you're up in the royal box now. It's all yours. Take it. Okay, thank you. I'm here with Chef Ishinabe. What do you think about the new Iron Chef? Uh, he is great. I would call this exciting cuisine. It's almost like a sport. I can feel the energy coming out of him. This is a match between tradition and dynamism. And how about you, Chef Sakai? 
I echo that. I can see that he's based in the U.S. His movements are very dynamic. I can't wait to try his dishes. Everything looks very delicious. I see, thank you. Fukui-san, they're all impressed with his dynamism. And as Ishinabe-san put it, exciting cuisine. It's an apt term to describe this. Our new Iron Chef is a force to be reckoned with. 20 minutes to go. All right, 20 minutes left now. And looking at this shot from the Iron Chef's side, this could pass for a French dish. It's not at all Japanese in appearance. Yes, yes, I agree. And would a sauce be added to this one? He's using edible flowers to add a touch of spring to this dish. The violet color is very nice. It's a violet petal, I think. Fukui-san, go. On the Iron Chef's side, we see a yellow sauce. Now, this is a mix of yellow pepper, garlic, ground ginger, lemon and citrus juices, soy sauce, salt, and black pepper. All right. The yellow pepper comes from Peru. Okay, and Hattori, these two great chefs are working really fast now. It's tough to keep up. Over on the challenger side, he's deep frying something now. What is this? The tail? Yes, it is the tail of the snapper. Fukui-san, yes. you're absolutely right. He is frying the tails. But before frying them, he dipped them into Chinese rice wine, chilies, and garlic. Oh, yes, wonderful. Frying the tail. And sorry to interrupt again, but he finally answered my question about how many dishes he's going to prepare. And he said, depending on the time remaining, he's going to shoot for maybe five or maybe six. Okay, five or six from the challenger and Masaharu Morimoto. This is foie gras? This is foie gras. And sea urchin, I believe three items. Fukui-san, yes. you're right. Sweet shrimp, sea urchin, and foie gras is all rolled into the snapper slices together with garlic, <laughs> ginger, and scallions. And there's a close-up of the sweet shrimp, sea urchin, and foie gras wrapped in snapper slices, and that looks like a tasty treat, that one. Mm. Back to the challenger. Ah, uh, yeah, the steamed one. And look, you can see the steamed rice is already coming out of the Ooh. food. Fantastic. Wow. Yes. And remember, it's got abalone. Yeah. Prawns, too. Well, this looks real good, real good. I want to try some of that spill. <laughs> I bet that rice is great. Oh, look at the Iron Chef. He has put a salt-cured item in that. That could be, that, that's a great idea. I ought to try it. Fukui-san. Yes. In the bowl you see now is, well, you remember the strained paste he was working on? Yes. This is it. And now he's added the salt-cured snapper. I bet he's going to spread this onto bagels. And here he is. He's doing exactly that. You are correct, sir. New York. Fukui-san. Go. I asked the Iron Chef why he used bagels. And he said the reason is bagels are a healthy breakfast item in New York and a nice change of pace. Folks, today we are seeing a borderless well, cuisine. we're getting quite a contrast. The challenger, traditional Japanese food, the new Iron Chef showing us some new directions for the 21st century. And both of them are doing really well. Indeed, it's a yeah, tough yeah, battle today. This is going to be a tough decision. Yes, bagels being toasted. And will the challenger serve some sake in this? Oh, well, that could be it. Sake? Or tail sake. But he was frying them. He was? It was? Then it's it's not. No, you, you just braise it when you're going to pour sake over it? Yeah, that's right. Normally that is. Fukui-san, yes. I asked the first Japanese Iron Chef, Chef Michiba, about the new Iron Chef. And he says even at his young age, this guy is on top of the world. And he said he really wants to try those cured snapper slices. So he's already captivated the former Iron Chefs. Way to go, Morimoto. Oh, look at that. We have the Statue of Liberty in the kitchen. I love his ideas. The Statue of Liberty. What is surprise well you know he had to bring that one in himself and he's arranging the dishes on a big basket just as his predecessors did before him how about the challenger Bukwiza, yes. I asked the challenger how he's doing, and he said everything's going fine, but he hopes that the flavor of the snapper has penetrated the turnips so that everything will be perfect. All right, and both men pushing, coming down the home stretch, and oh, what do we have here? And before I forget, the glasses you see are filled with an apple gelatin, strained apple juice. All right. Five minutes to go. And the five-minute warning given, and hearing it, Iron Chef Morimoto picks up the pace. Less than five minutes, and remember, there are no timeouts. And the challenger is working on a terrine-like item, too. But he's shaking his head and doesn't seem pleased. Maybe it's not hardening the way he'd like it to. 
Mm. Like it. And uh, on the Iron Chef side, he is uh, pouring soup into the cups. Okay. Fukui-san. Go. This soup is from the pressure cooker. He added some miso to it and a little butter too. Okay, thank you. But the cups there, they're just regular coffee cups, aren't they? Looks like something out of your average 24-hour uh, Manhattan <laughs> diner. He's really put us all in a New York state of mind. <laughs> oh, and the challenger. Yes, this is Finn Sake. But, uh, no? I can't really see what it is. So this is no, where he wanted to use the bones, chef. huh? Three minutes to go. Okay, three minutes to go. The clock is ticking. And this is where the Iron Chef... No, he's taking the bones off. What, what is this, a misdirection play of some <laughs> kind? Or... Fukui-san! Yes? Fukui-san, a tense moment here. He says he forgot to dress the fins with sugar, so he took them back out to ah, do that. He wants sugar on it. It had a sweet oh. smell to it, I guess. No, no, it's got to be decoration only. Really? But with sugar, you can bite at it on the surface. Mm, maybe just to lick it a little. Oh, you just have to try it. Okay, I'll buy that. Actually, they're both working on desserts now. Ah, it's ice cream, isn't it? Yes, from the Challenger, and we know he's bound by tradition, but this is a rather inventive dessert. Fukui-san, yes. what you see on top of the ice cream is a deep-fried snapper slice, taking the place of a wafer. So it's more like a wafer. Yes, but it's still sliced snapper. Oh, with uh, cornstarch around, I see. A replacement for the wafer eaten with ice cream. And what it means is he's met the requirement to include the theme ingredient in all his dishes. Okay, Iron Chef and, side. Uh, we have some innards being used here. Grilled, perhaps. Perhaps these are the soft roll of the snapper and the liver. One minute to go. Okay, 60 seconds, and the new Iron Chef still working. Right now, working the steamer. Looking and hold it. How about this? An English newspaper laid onto the place. Hey, you don't think he doesn't want to make a statement about where he's made his mark in the Big Apple? Think again. And I think I saw there a sports section, really? and I like it. You can catch up on the scores while enjoying his exciting cuisine. Well, I guess he knows what people expect. 30 seconds to go. Man from New York, so he's doing all kinds of things that suggest New York. Right. Okay, less than 30 seconds. My, what a tantalizing looking creation. Our new Iron Chef in his debut match, Japanese Iron Chef the Third, Masaharu Morimoto. 15 seconds to go. 15 seconds left. And how will he fare in his first match? 10 will, seconds to go. Will the Master go. Chef from Yokohama trip him up, or will the Iron Chef be able to hang a Five star seconds. on the back of his apron? The final Three, countdown. Two. And this one. is it. Both men are done. The Red Snapper battle is over. How do you feel after that hour? It's really short. At first, I didn't know what I was doing. Confident of winning? I can't say, really. Okay. Well, thank you and good luck. This was your first battle. How did it go? Nope. Really? Well, the time limit was tough and not a lot of space to work with. Uh-huh. But uh, I did my best. And your feelings about the dishes you prepared? I'm confident about the taste, but it's up to the judges now. Challenger Hirayama is offering these seven dishes. First, snapper fin sake, with such a savory aroma. Second, grilled red snapper, horaku style, with two flavors blended, the bones braised with soy, the meat grilled with miso. Fried snapper tail is served with a Chinese flavored sweet and sour sauce, sophisticated enough to enjoy the scales of the snapper too. Fourth, snapper and wine jelly using the innards, all the flavors of the snapper condensed in one dish. Snapper head and turnip stew, this along the royal road of Japanese cuisine, simple yet so profound in the subtle sweetness it offers. Steamed red snapper rice truly represents springtime using the whole snapper. The rice and salt cured cherry blossoms create a perfect harmony of spring with the snapper. Sweet and sour sauce will be poured on before serving. And for dessert, snapper crackers and Zingluju ice cream. The crispy snapper cracker presents a delightful match with the ice cream. Iron Chef Morimoto has prepared five dishes. First, snapper innards braised with miso with the unique use of English newspapers. The jalapeno mixed in with the miso gives an accent to the crispness. 
Second, snapper sandwiched by potato chips with yellow sauce. Caviar and miso paste between the potato chips with sashimi of red snapper. The yellow sauce adds a spicy touch. Third is seaweed cured snapper with scallion oil with the New York decoration. A global dish with sea urchin, foie gras, and sweet shrimp wrapped by snapper slices cured in seaweed. Just before eating, heated scallion oil will be poured with truffles to be sprinkled on. This dish says what Iron Chef Morimoto is all about. Red Snapper Soup, New York style, a wonderful union between Yuba and cheese. The stock from the snapper cutoffs is exquisitely done. It comes with bagels flavored by salt cured snapper paste. And finally, Big Apple Jelly. The pectoral fins dipped in bourbon have no trace of a fishy smell. They match perfectly with apple jelly. of challenger Yukio Hirayama. I tried to use every part of the fish, from the head to the tail. The meat is flavored subtly with miso, and the bones are lightly dipped into soy sauce. The snapper itself wouldn't even recognize it was cooked. I see a silent world from which a subtle flavor comes to me. This is very gentle, very sophisticated. The subtle seasoning is key to this. You know, that enables us to enjoy the flavor of the fish. If the miso flavor or the soy flavor is too strong, it just won't work. I'm from Yokohama, so I prepared one dish with a Chinese touch to it. I feel like I'm a cat using my fingers to enjoy this. All the parts around the bones, you don't want to miss them. The scales are good too. Yes, very good. I agree, the scales are delicious, crispy. Ah. Uh, this is wonderful. Mm. The tail was good, but the head is amazing. <laughs> I tell you, this is what red snapper should taste like. Very nice. Yeah, well, this might sound curt, but for me, it isn't creative enough. It's too traditional. It's like, this is how you cook red snapper in Japan. <laughs> you know, just like you'd see on any other cooking program. But I do have to admit, the flavor is top notch, so, well, it's going to be a tough call today. The sixth course, steamed red snapper rice, is sliced before the panel with a sweet and sour sauce poured on top. Mm, this is another hit. Mm, I can't stop. <laughs> this conveys a sense of spring. He didn't overload this with rice to give priority to the flavor of the snapper. We all enjoyed the dishes. Yes. yes. Any comments about the creativity or joy of dining? Well, in the end, only one man can win. But you know me. I like unique stuff like Puff Daddy and Chumbawamba. <laughs> but you know what people remember is? It's Frank Sinatra. You know, New York, New York, my way, the classics. These dishes are my way. They're classics. <laughs> well, we haven't tried the new Iron Chef's dishes yet. Yes. Well, I hear he's like Prince, and that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Now come the dishes by Iron Chef Morimoto. This is the first dish. Yes. Some are reading this paper. Does this mean anything? No. See, I told you. <laughs> well, look at this. Isn't this great? I told you he's off the wall. 
You know, this is just fantastic. It is cute. I almost want to say, are you out of your mind? <laughs> I didn't say that. Japanese chefs tend to be conservative. And that's why I love something like this. It's great. <laughs> hey, nobody's talking about his dish. <laughs> He doesn't treat caviar as special. He didn't put just a little on top in a corny way. He mashed them together with miso. Red snapper doesn't have much flavor when raw. You need soy sauce or wasabi. So this man has added a lot of stimulating, spicy things around the snapper. I like the spiciness of this dish. And now the Iron Chef is giving the finishing touches in front of the panel. This is citrus juice and soy. And this is salted seaweed. And this is scallion oil prepared in an oven together with olive oil. And this is sardine and fried chives. Ah, sea urchin. Japone Americana. <laughs> it has sea urchin and truffles, all expensive items. But at the same time, it doesn't make you feel like you're eating something too formal. And it's good. The challenger didn't have any raw items, but the one with the potato chips was a raw item, and this time it has been slightly braised. He's offering a variety in how you enjoy Red Snapper. The challenger has tackled Red Snapper. You know, he's found the best way to use it, to cook it, and serve it. Now, on the other hand, the Iron Chef is speaking through the fish. He's saying, it's me. And that's why he's the Iron Chef. That's right. I'm asking myself, is this Japanese food? Maybe my perceptions are a little too conservative. I guess this is a new form of Japanese cuisine. The Iron Chef is an artist. And he's taking on tradition. This guy is like the Andy Warhol of Japanese cuisine. And aside from that, he's destroying old concepts. You know, when you think about dining, some people just go for the taste, or you might appreciate it as ceremony. But it always has to be fun, enjoyable. I think this man has showed me a new way of uh, enjoying dining. I like this. I agree. These dishes are not very unique, very unique. But I question these a little as a work of an iron chef. I'm still wondering how to vote. The decision is moments away. Will he win his debut match? We've seen what our new Iron Chef from New York can do. And now the judges will decide, and the decision will without doubt influence the future of Kitchen Stadium. The verdict. Morimoto's debut was a dazzling display challenging our notions of Japanese cuisine. How did he do competing in a kitchen on his home turf for the first time in 12 years? Yet the challenger is of very high caliber, revered even in Chinatown. Will Morimoto shine like the diamond in his ear? It is time to know. Is it the Iron Chef or the vanguard of Japanese cuisine? Iron Chef Masaharu Morimoto. It's the Iron Chef. Congratulations. He's coming out on top in his strenuous debut match. Japanese Iron Chef the third, Masaharu Morimoto. What a way to break into the kitchen stadium. And let's take a look at the scores in his debut match. Akimoto, 18-17, Iron Chef. Momoi, 1918, Iron Chef. Okada, 1817, the challenger. And Kishi, 1816, Iron Chef. Three to one. The victory goes to the Iron Chef. With the former and current Iron Chefs looking on, Morimoto's made a sensational debut back in his home country in the kitchen stadium. Proving you can come home again. The battle was like a fight between a pure, good Japanese boy and a modern, naughty kid. It was a tough decision, but today, I voted for the naughty kid. 
He's actually a sensitive and thoughtful man, but he doesn't want to show that to others, so he just says, well, I thought it was good. And I think that speaks for how deep his creations really are. Today I was able to watch a very experienced traditional Japanese chef and a modern version of a U.S. style Japanese chef. What a contrast it was, and it was a lot of fun. To me, he is almost like a famous warlord who destroyed all old systems of the time back then. He was enjoying himself, doing what he wanted, ignoring many rules of thumb in Japanese cuisine. I think he is the symbol of a new Japanese cuisine of the coming era.